Manual, it's 16, but uh, we're looking at the principal types of preaching. The principal types of preaching. Again, we're not talking about the style. The style of pastors are, you know, they're different. Dep Depende sa kanilang personality. Itong principal types that I'm going to share, at least three of them, Una po muna, there's a, um, <clears throat> a poetry here by uh, Rick Griffith. Nagtuturo po siya sa Singapore uh, uh, Seminary. <clears throat> Sabi po niya, The preacher stood and read the text. The listeners sat and looked perplexed. For they could see his words after that could just have easily been pulled from a hat. Ask brother to father and sister to mother. How Bible and sermon related to each other. Ask husband to wife and friend to friend. Why the beginning had nothing to do with the end. <clears throat> Sometimes ganyan po yung mga sermon, the beginning had nothing to do with the end. Kasi the beginning, you open up by reading a portion of scripture, pero at the end, hindi man lang, hindi man lang pinag-aralan yung binasang talata or passage. And nagkwento na lang na nagkwento. So based on this, there are at least three types of preaching. Una po ang tinatawag, ito po yung tinatawag kong around the world type of preaching. <clears throat> Pakisulat po yung around. <clears throat> around the world type of preaching. Ito po yung type ng preaching na there's no one theme in the sermon. It's like a butterfly that would fly from one, you know, hop on one flower to another. Kasi iba-ibang theme, iba-ibang topics throughout the sermon. He will start by uh, talking about prayer, tapos pupunta sa faith, tapos pupunta sa second coming, tapos pupunta sa giving, always nag-e-end sa tithes and offering. You know? So yung ganyang klase yung mga sermon, all around the world type of preaching. Meron po isang preacher, a member approached him after the, after the sermon, sabi po ng member sa kanya, your illustrations needed a sermon. Medyo baliktad. Usually, your sermon or your sermon needed illustrations kasi ito puro kwento-kwento lang, paiba-iba ng kwento, and then, naging uh, sermon na. The second type of preaching is what we call around the bush. Kung hindi around the, around the world, it's around the bush type of preaching. <clears throat> so, dito po sa around the bush, it's one theme, pero hindi po na-develop ng maayos ang sermon Paikot-ikot ang sermon. Walang logical progression. And so the pastor did not develop the sermon carefully, kaya medyo humahaba ang sermon kapag hindi pinag-isipan. Because you could have stated it in just two sentences, but because you did not think through what you want to say, it took you ten sentences, which you could have expressed in just two sentences. Kung napag-isipan pa, eh may mga pastors na talagang sobrang haba kung mag-preach, di ba? Sobrang haba. Hindi lang 3 points, 20 points. etong isang caricature on the 19 point, abay, ginawa ng mga elders, talaga namang inalsa na nila yung pulpito. Perhaps I'll skip over point 19 and move along to point 20, wrapping it up with that. <coughs> Merong mga pulpito sa Amerika, wala na silang pulpito sa stage. Yung pulpito nila, nandun, automatic. Pagdating ng pastor, automatic aangat lang yung pulpit. Wow, talaga naman. Pagdating ng pastor, ilalapag lang yung Bible niya. Talagang automatic. But you know what? Some churches, that's not the kind of pulpit they need. Ang kailangan nila, yung tinatawiyuan ng pastor, mayroong butas yun doon. Pagka lumampas sa oras, may pipindod doon yung pastor, bababa. <laughs> Minsan ganun yung kailangan. Da sobrang haba. If it's not around the world or around the bush, then the third type of preaching is the all-around type of preaching. The all-around type of preaching. Ito pong all-around type of preaching is the kind of preaching, it's basically the same sermon Sunday after Sunday, binabago lang yung introduction and conclusion. Pero yung kabuuan ng sermon, it's the same topic all over again. And so, all-around type of preaching. There's this, uh, mag mayroon mag-a-special number, 
And then uh, she gave a uh, introduction to the number, to the singing. Sabi niya, before I sing, I'd like to express the, my appreciation to the pastor. His sermons have taught me the truth of this song, Wasted Years. <clears throat> oh, wow, wow, naman. But friends, there are three types of preaching homiletically on how you use a passage. Ito po yung tatlong klase ng preaching, classification ng sermons, based on the manner of handling the text. Number one is called topical sermon. Topical sermon. So kapag topical sermon, alam mong topical yan, kasi the preacher would gather passages to explain the topic. So ibig sabihin, to explain the topic, he will get a verse from the New Testament, kuha sa Old Testament, kuha siya from all over the Bible to explain the topic. Example po neto, here's a sermon, The Believer's Hope. Ang topic niya po, characteristics of the believer's hope, kuha sa 1 Peter, the living hope, kuha siya sa 1 Thessalonians, saving hope, Hebrews 6, sure hope, Titus 2, blessed hope, Romans 8, unseen hope. So yan po ang topical. You get verses to explain the topic. Now, alam po natin yung danger ng topical is in your, you know, getting verses from all over, how sure are you na tama yung context ng verse na yun? Sometimes we pull out verses out of context because it sounds like the topic that we are uh, talking about. But friends, there's nothing wrong with topical preaching. Please, I'm not here to, you know, <clears throat> knock over these uh, topical sermons because you cannot preach some, some uh, topics in an expository way. For example, the Trinity. Wala namang expository preaching on the Trinity because there's no one passage that talks about the Trinity. You have to get it from all over. You cannot preach from the life of David just from one passage. You have to get it from different sources. So may mga topics talagang cannot be done in an exp expository way. Topical talaga yung approach. The book of Proverbs, you cannot preach that in an expository way. Hindi pa pwedeng, ngayong Sunday, ah, Proverbs chapter 1 tayo. Next Sunday, Proverbs chapter... That's the wrong way to handle the book of Proverbs. Kasi ang best approach to Proverbs is topical. Gather all the Proverbs that talks about child discipline, talk, get all the verses that talks about money or, you know, topical ang approach. So again, nothing wrong with topical sermons as long as we're careful about the context of the verses that we are Getting. I preach a topical sermon, eh, pero ito safe ito ng konti kasi they all came from the same gospel, the same gospel of John. Iba-ibang chapters pero isang tao lang nagsasalita dito, si Kristo lahat. So alam natin na yung pagkagamit niya ng mathetes, which is the word disciple, pare-pareho ang pagkagamit niya. So hindi ka ma out of context. So ang title ko ng sermon is The Dynamics of the dynamic marks of a disciple. Unang mark, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciple. So, ibig sabihin, His faithfulness abiding in the Word of God. Iyan yung una natin makikita ng mark of a disciple. Pangalawa, John 13, about obeying the will of God. Na yung commandment niya to love one another. So, ibig sabihin, His fondness obeying the will of God. Yung pangatlong mark is His fruitfulness na showing yourselves to be my disciple. His fruitfulness exhibiting the work of God. So that would be a safe uh, topical preaching kasi number one, isang libro lang tapos isang tao lang nagsasalita. So that's okay. At least in terms of context, alam natin uh, medyo safe siya. Next is what we call textual sermon. Yung textual sermon naman isang verse lang or maximum na two verses. So may mga pastors who can preach just from a verse of scripture or two verses, sometimes even just a sentence within a verse or even just a phrase within a sentence. I heard a black preacher. Philippians chapter 3 verse 12, two words lang ang kanyang sermon. Yung words na press on. Yun lang yung kanyang sermon, yung press on. Those two words from Philippians chapter 3, he preached for 30 minutes just on press on. Grabe, ang galing. Ang ganda ng pagkakadevelop niya ng sermon. So ito pong textual, hindi po ito madali because you have to just focus on a verse or two and then squeeze out all the spiritual nutrients from that verse and then deliver it for 30 minutes. So ito pong textual sermon, for example, ito pong uh, Ezra 7.10. For Ezra had set his heart, it demands resolute determination. It demands diligent assimilation to study the law. It demands complete dedication to practice it and then it demands faithful propagation to preach or to teach his statutes. And so again, that's just from one verse 
and then, you know, getting all the nutrients from that one verse. But then, try to design it in such a way na medyo madaling sundan. I preach a topical sermon, ano no, textual sermon, Acts 1.8 lang. And then you just divide the words, but you, yun lang first two words, the people the Spirit empowers are not perfect people, but yielded believers, but you will receive power, the power the Spirit in those, and then when the Spirit comes on you, the pattern the Spirit employs. So again, that's a uh, textual preaching just from one verse. But then the third type, friends, in terms of using a passage is expository sermon. So dito sa expository, it's not just one or two verses. It's a complete pericope. It's a complete context, complete paragraph possibly. No? Pwede nga isang buong chapter. It can even be one whole book. You know, expository preaching. So dito po sa expository, it's one basic passage of scripture. Ibig sabihin ng basic passage, one complete context. Alright? Nandiyan na kompleto, hindi bitin. Kompleto siya sa isang paragraph. A lot of times, you can have a combination of topical and expository. Karamihan po ng sermons ko, para ako nag-e-echo, karamihan po ng sermons ko, topical and expository. Ibig sabihin, you choose a topic, pero you want to develop the topic not from getting verses from all over, you develop the topic just from one passage. Kaya topical, expository preaching po yan. Marami naman po mga passages na, you know, about prayer, you can talk about prayer. Uh, tomorrow, yeah, I'm preaching here and um, hindi dito sa ibang simbahan, but then sa May 1 dito. I'll be preaching from James chapter 1. Ito po yung uh, victor or victim, the anatomy of temptation, 13 to 18. One complete passage po yan, 13 to 18. Si James po, discuss niya about temptation. So it's easy to divide. Dahil dyan po, you can see the certainty of temptation sa verse 13. You can see the character of temptation sa verse uh, 14 and 15. And then you can see the conquest of temptation from verses uh, 16 to 18. So medyo madali pong i-divide ito kasi one complete package po siya nandiyan. You can even expand on verse 13. Kasi sa verse 13, makikita natin dyan, temptation is always present in life. It is never prompted by God. You can even expand the characters of verses 14 and 15. Temptation is personal. It is produced internally, externally, and infernally. And temptation is a process. And then, of course, the conquest, you can expand it. When tempted, look ahead, remember God's judgment, look around, remember God's goodness, and look within, remember God's nature. So again, that's an expository type of preaching. You can even preach from the whole book. Nag-preach ako from 3 John. Yung 3 John, madaling hatiin. Kasi it talks about three people. It talks about Gaius, it talks about Diotrephes, and then it talks about Demetrius. And then, sequential ang pagkakadiscuss. Si Gaius, the commendable Christian, verses 1 to 8. Si Diotrephes, the critical Christian, verses 9 to 11. Si Demetrius, the consistent Christian, verses 12 to 14. Eh, pwede mo expand yung kay Gaius. Si Gaius, he is devoted to the truth. He is disciplined in his walk. He is dutiful in his hospitality. Expand mo yung kay Diotrephes. He is disruptive in his pride. He is deceptive in his speech. He is destructive in his actions. And then, si Demetrius, you can clearly see there's a verse 12 to 14. He is distinguished among his peers, dedicated to the truth, and distinctive. So sa expositor preaching, you just focus on one basic passage of Scripture, depending on the time allotment that you have. You can have one whole book, one chapter, one paragraph, basta complete thought. One pericope nandiyan sa passage. Alright? So, yan po ang three types of preaching. Now, what I did for my dissertation, nag-prepare po ko ng, uh, ng interview of 55 churches in and around Cebu City when I was preparing for my dissertation. Dito po, ang in-interview ko po ay 24 churches na evangelical, 27 na Pentecostal, and 4 mainline churches. You know, mga mainline uh, yung um, Methodist or Episcopalian, yung mga mainline Protestant churches that we have. Now, out of the 55 churches na discover ko po sa aking research, 47% are topical preachers. 47% of the pastors in and around Cebu City are, are, are topical preachers. And then, meron pong 22% na no pattern, no discernible pattern. Hindi mo malaman kung textual, topical, or expository. No pattern po sa kanilang uh, preaching. 
And then I found out that there are 18 expository preachers and then meron pong uh, 13%, 7 na textual preachers. I believe this is representative of all the pastors throughout the Philippines. Ang concern po na Apollos Project, ito pong 69% na to, ito pong topical, at ito pong 22% na no pattern. Yan po yung target natin na matulungan sila how to preach a topical sermon na accurate to the context. Or tulungan natin itong 22% na no discernible pattern na sana talagang mag-aral sila na not anything goes, but really consider a passage of scripture sa kanilang preaching. And so friends, when I conducted this survey, hindi ko po tinanong yung pastor mismo, pastor, anong preaching ka ba? I did not ask the pastor. Kasi sometimes the pastors are not very honest, you know, about their preaching. Tinanong ko yung isang pastor, Pastor, anong preaching mo, Pastor? Ano ako? Supposedory preaching ako. Ano, Pastor? Supposedory preaching ako. Ano? Pastor, hindi yan supposedory. Expository yan, Pastor. Sounds like eh. Expository, Pastor, dito. Supposedory doon. <laughs> what I did was to design a questionnaire and ask members of the church at least one year na nakikinig sa pastor, and through this questionnaire, a-answer nila, and then I'll be able to deduce anong klaseng preaching meron yung pastor. So that's how I conducted this survey. So friends, I was able to get some samples of preaching. Ito po isang preaching po to. Tingnan po ninyo, the practice of prayer. Topical po siya. Apat na passages sa kanyang ginamit. Ano pong, meron po ba kayo nakikita rito medyo problematic, medyo questionable. Yung posture, John 16, 24, medyo okay lang. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. Alright. The pattern of prayer, ba? may makukuha ka nga sa Matthew 6 na pattern. Diyan nga natin kinuha yung acts, di ba? Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication. And then itong posture ang problema. Daniel 6, 10. Daniel knelt down. Ang problema po na Daniel 16, this is a narrative. This is descriptive material. Hindi po natin ito pwedeng gawing prescriptive material. We cannot prescribe from a narrative. I mean, we can get some principles, pero hindi po natin pwede sabihin na dapat nakaluhod. Ah. Ang tamang panalangin kagaya ni Daniel, dapat nakaluhod. Yan ang epektibo na prayer. Aba, hindi naman pwede natin sabihin niya. You cannot prescribe from a narrative. Dahil wala namang komando na dapat nakaluhod ka. Alright? And then, of course, the promise of prayer. Matthew 18, 19. Anong sabi dyan? Matthew 18, 19. If two of you agree on anything you ask, my Father in heaven will do it. Anong context niyan? Prayer ba ang context niyan? Is it about prayer in general? No. Ang context ng chapter 18 nagsimula sa verse 15. If your brother sins against you, go and show him his fault just between the two of you. Ang context nito na nagpipray na dalawa ay yung... yung Yung reconciliation is yung offended Christian and the offended Christian. Silang dalawa nag a -agree. nag a sila. And so this is not a general uh, promise on prayer na pagka nag tayo, talagang wala nang lusot yan, sasagutin ng Panginoon niya. Hindi naman pwede. Kahit na mag-agree tayong lahat, kung hindi kalooban ng Panginoon, hindi naman mangyayari, di ba? It's not a matter of agreeing. Of course, when we have prayer meetings, syempre nag a tayo, hindi mo pwede nag a -agree. Lord, I don't agree with that. Lord, I don't. Hindi mo pwede May nagpe-prayer, sasabihin, don't agree with that. Of course, we agree. Pero friends, in terms of answered prayer, that's not the guarantee. Hindi galing dito sa verse na because it's out of context. How about this sample? It must be heaven. Ba, ganda ng sermon. It must be heaven. Pre Dinescribe niya. It's a prepared place. John 14, 3. I go and prepare a place for you. Ba, okay. Tama, prepare eh. Tapos, it's a perfect place. 1 Corinthians 2, 9. What no mind has conceived, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, these are the very things which God prepared for those who love Him. Anong context ng 1 Corinthians 2.9? Heaven ba? Ang context ng 1 Corinthians 2.9 is the wisdom of God. It's not about heaven. This is out of context. We're using a verse to prove something about heaven, describe something. Hindi naman heaven ang dinidescribe dyan. It's the wisdom of God. Alright? So out of context to. And then, Revelation 21, 1-4, it's a pure place. Bakit? Kasi it's, the streets are made of gold. I'm sure yung gold don't pure. Kaya ginawa niyang pure place. Kaya, yun, medyo may counting violation. It's a topical uh, sermon. 
How about this one? This one is textual. Back to verses lang. Matthew 18, 19, and, Matthew 28, 19, and 20. Topic, uh, textual yan. Anything na medyo questionable dito? The command is a problem because the go is not the command. The only command here in Matthew 20, 19 is make disciples. That's the only command. The going, baptizing, teaching, they're all participles. They're all part of disciple making. But the only command is make disciples. Kaya lang naging command yan kasi pag binasa ng pastor, therefore, go and make this. Isinigaw mo, hindi naging command. Isinigaw pagbasa eh. And so parang dating nga naman command. But coverage all nations, this is kind of uh, medyo problemado tong nations because nations today is the political boundary na nations, uh, nations dito, hindi naman ethnic groups naman ang rinirefer dito. And then I will be with you. So okay lang. So again, that's how we can discern anong, anong klaseng preaching, whether it's topical, textual, or expository. But here's a statement by Walter Kaiser. Uh, basahin po natin lahat. Walter Kaiser said, ready, read. <laughs> Sobra naman. Now, that's a clear bias. So, yan, medyo bias na siya for expository preaching. We have nothing against topical sermons, friends. Again, ang, ang point natin is we need to use verses carefully, wisely, and that contextually, talagang accurate siya. So, we said, a preacher is like a tightrope walker. Kailangan niya i-balance biblical and then contemporary on the other side. To be biblical, we have exegetical investigation. Nandiyan na po yung uh, read, uh, realize, retrace na ito nga yung sa level 2 na pinag-aralan na natin. <music>